Would so, that be like performance enhancement? It's it's not an enhancement. It's a little bit of sugar, which can get you going. Carbs. But it's all natural ingredients. There's no steroids in here. Eating your mom's cooking is sort of comforting, don't you think? Sure. Things change, but the cookie bars remain. That's for sure. My mom likes to think that the world is as pure as her cookie bars. But life isn't always like that. And a lot of things we grew up believing ended up not being true. First, I found out there's no such thing as Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. That kind of sucked. Then I saw this news report. The Iron Sheik had been arrested recently, along with wrestler Hacksaw Jim Duggan, while driving along the Garden State Parkway. The Iron Sheik was charged with possession of cocaine and marijuana. What has interested most wrestling fans in this case is that the Iron Sheik and Hacksaw are known to be adversaries. So why were they traveling together? Yeah, I thought these guys hated each other. Wham! Right on the back of the Iron Sheik! Was their feud all made up? Was wrestling fake? Who's left to believe in anymore? Well, at least I still had my heroes. Those guys would never let me down. Today, Hogan admits the famous physique was the result of 12 years of steroids. Truth is, all my heroes had a dirty little secret. Hollywood actor Sylvester Stallone has been charged with importing bodybuilding drugs when he visited Australia last month. Did you take steroids? I, take them. I took them, yeah, up until the competition. I was always against steroids. And when I found out that all my heroes used them, I'd like to say it didn't bother me, but it really did. I can't imagine how my mom would feel if she found out that both of my brothers are on steroids right now. My older brother started using steroids when he went to play Division I football at the University of Cincinnati. When I got to Cincinnati, I mean, the practices were so grueling, I mean, much more than what I expected. Coaches would say, you gotta get bigger, you gotta get stronger, you gotta get faster. Was it intimidating? Oh, man, no, different, a lot different than I thought it was gonna be. He called me from Cincinnati and asked me for money for steroids. And I said, what do you need that for? He says, because I can't compete here. So I'm like, well, I don't know what that is. It sounds like drugs. He goes, it is drugs. And I said, well, I'm not gonna send you money for drugs. If you want drugs, go get a job. I remember um, at one point, I think you maybe came home for a break or you did something and you told me, hey, come here, help me out. And you pulled down your pants and you're like, you have to inject this into me. And I hated it because I was totally against steroids. I hated it. And you're like, come on, oh, you know, just do it. You have to do it. You got to help your big brother out, man. There was no decision at all. Uh, everybody else uh, that was doing well uh, was on him. Shortly after getting on the juice, Mad Dog quit college to pursue an even bigger dream. I couldn't believe it. That was my big brother wrestling on TV. Mad Dog wanted to be a superstar, but he was what they call a jobber. That's the guy they pay to get beat up to make the other guys look good. He didn't care though. He was going to get himself a contract and headline WrestleMania. Why did you even come in the ring? You should have gone home, dummy. But he never got the contract, and eventually the WWE stopped calling. Why did you think you didn't make it? Uh, probably mostly my own fault. I went from being a guy who used steroids to a guy who used steroids and pot, and I still needed to escape reality. So I started taking ecstasy, cocaine, acid, painkillers. Mike Bell is where he does not need to be now. He's in the wrong corner, and he's paying the price. Mad Dog always told me that he'd rather be dead than average. And when he thought his dream was over, he couldn't cope with the failure. So I had a bottle of liquid lead, a bottle of NyQuil, and like four boxes of sleeping pills. Uh, I went down to the river, uh, down, by, by, down by the railroad tracks, Parked my car, uh, took everything. And he had tried to walk into the, the um, he tried to walk into the he, he was Hudson down. River. So did you take all the sleeping pills? Everything. There's and no, the lead there's, additive? There's no way I should be alive right now. There's no way. It's 10 years later, and despite everything that happened, Mad Dog is still trying to get that contract, trying to keep the dream alive. I've been all over the world, from Singapore to Louisville, and it doesn't matter. You line them up, I'll knock them down. I can see why you never made it. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> Mad Dog used to wrestle in front of a television audience of 10 million people every week. But tonight, he's wrestling at the Portuguese Men's Center in front of 200 people for about 50 bucks. Instead of wrestling Brent the Hitman Hart, he's facing Magito, and he's getting his ass kicked. Oh, oh, yeah, Come on. My baby brother Smelly was always trying to keep up, and despite everything that happened to Mad Dog, 
He followed in his footsteps anyway, becoming a pro wrestler and using steroids. The reason I decided to use steroids was simple. I just needed to get bigger. That was pretty much it. But unlike when Mad Dog started using steroids, Smelly had a wife to consider. When you got married, did you ever think that your husband would be injecting himself with something? No. I mean, that didn't even enter in my conscious thought. When I first met him, he was against steroids. I mean, he was just like, you don't need to do it. I've never done them. I just don't believe in them. I was pretty upset about it because I didn't want it to come to that. I was kind of scared. I didn't want to uh, inject this oil into my body. I thought I was just, you know, I thought I was weird. He's not a huge guy, you know. He's six feet if he's lucky. And so I knew that it was definitely going to help because, you know, that's what, the, what it does, what steroids do, so make, make you bigger. She basically said, do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Here's Jake with the daddy. After their son was born, Smelly decided the life of a pro wrestler was not exactly what he wanted anymore. Here's my little Jake in his swing. You know, looking back on it, I don't really know what the hell I wanted. Having a contract means that you belong to the WWE and you have to travel. I was married with a kid. I mean, that's, that's really all I need. Mm -hmm. A house, a kid, and a wife, I'm set. One, two, three. They settled down in the suburbs, and Smelly even opened up his own gym. Yeah, my little brother gave up the wrestling dream for a respectable family life. But he didn't quite give up everything. Now that I'm into it, I realize it's not really all that bad. I love steroids. I mean, I think I'll probably be on and off of them probably forever. This is what you train for. This is what you do. I thought that we had an agreement that he did it for wrestling. Now he's not wrestling anymore. So naturally, I thought he would just stop. In my mind, there's there's no excuse for not being as strong as you possibly can be. You do what you got to do to win. Come on, Chris. Let's do this now. Let's give it up for him. It's a lot of weight. If you are apprehensive about taking a steroid or you're apprehensive about trying some new methods, then maybe you're not cut out to be a champion. In first place, Mark Bell. I guess I'm not cut out to be a champion because I tried steroids, but I felt so guilty I had to stop. Are you going to win worst overall lifter? <laughs> and now I can't even compete in the sport I grew up loving. I mean, my baby brother just beat me by 130 pounds. We all grew up in the same house. So why are my brothers fine with steroids, but I'm not? What would you say the differences are between the like three Between, between three the kids? three? Yeah. Well, I always kind of say it like this. You were in the middle of two, two guys that were very strapping, athletic, and you were tiny and short in stature. So I worked extra hard to make you feel extra special. One day I took you in your room out, and if you remember this conversation where I said, Christopher, what's the best part of an Oreo cookie? What is the best part of an Oreo cookie? The middle. The middle. That's right. So even though you have two sides of a cookie on this end, the middle part is the most delicious. Everybody wants the middle. They even made double stuff. Yep, this is pretty much how it was growing up. Mom stayed at home with the kids while Dad wore a suit and tie and went to work. He was at IBM for 20 years until he was downsized. But now he has his own business doing taxes. Everybody thinks that success in America is the amount of dollars that you have, and that's not true. The real true heroes are people who go to work every day and do their job and uh, bring up their kids to the best of their ability. I wanted to be Hulk Hogan. I wanted to be Arnold. I wanted to be Sylvester Stallone. Did you have heroes like that growing up when you were a kid? Yeah, we did. Um, we had heroes uh, like uh, Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, but I knew I could never aspire to it because back then, you grew up, you graduated, you got married, and you had kids. Yeah, my dad had the American dream. You know, marry your high school sweetheart, buy a house, and take your kids to see the Yankees. But things are different now, and even baseball's changed from when my dad was growing up. And now when I think of baseball, I don't think about the Babe or Hammer and Hank. I think of steroids. After the strike of